We largely define our ideals by the heroes we choose. And our ideals, things like loyalty, courage, justice, and honor, largely define us. But what happens when our heroes let us down? Today we will look at two very similar heroes, Luke Skywalker and Maverick, both who nearly 40 years later from their originals appear in sequel movies, but they're handled very differently. The trailer for Star Wars, The Last Jedi, is finally here. Force the Last Jedi released in 2017, Top Gun Maverick in 2022. Last Jedi made $1.33 billion, Top Gun made $1.49 billion. Both have iconic music, both heroes are amazing pilots, both lost people close to them. So what makes one good and the other bad. For that to all make sense, we're going to take a closer look at both of these movies, so if you haven't seen them, spoilers moving forward. Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell is tasked with training a new generation of elite pilots for a mission that is borderline suicidal. Maverick is forced to face Rooster, the son of his fallen wingman Goose, after his attempts to protect him failed massively. Maverick must confront his past, push the limits of speed, and prove that even the old school can still fly rings around the new. It's a high-octane blast of nostalgia, heart, and jet-fueled action. Captain Mitchell has always been one to ignore orders in favor of what he thinks is best, and now this does get him in a lot of trouble. This is also what is so endearing about his character. His conviction to do what he thinks needs done, sometimes in overconfidence, but always in an effort to do what he thinks is for the greater good. This has not changed in the time since the first film to the second. He's still the same character. The end is inevitable, Maverick. Your kind is headed for extinction. Maybe so, sir. But not today. Maverick is not a perfect hero. He's a real hero, and he is one that is never going to give up, even in the face of great and challenging odds. We want you to teach it. Teach? Sir? With all due respect, sir, I'm not a teacher. You were a Top Gun instructor before. That was almost 30 years ago. I lasted two months. It's not where I belong. Well, then let me be perfectly blunt. You are not my first choice. In fact, you aren't even on a list. You were here at the request of Admiral Kazansky. Now, Iceman happens to be a man I deeply admire, and he seems to think that you have something left to offer the Navy. What that is, I can't imagine. You don't have to take this job, but let me be clear. This will be your last post, Captain. You fly for Top Gun, or you don't fly for the Navy ever again. He takes this demotion and decides to make sure that this next group of pilots is going to be trained for whatever they might encounter. Preparing them for the worst, pushing them to their limits, all in an effort to help them be the best Attention they can be. On deck. He's considered to be one of the finest pilots this program has ever produced. I give you Captain Pete Mitchell. Call sign, Maverick. Good morning. The F-18 NATOPS contains everything they want you to know about your aircraft. I'm assuming you know the book inside and out. Damn right. Yeah. Damn straight. You got it. So does your enemy. But what the enemy doesn't know is your limits. I intend to find them, test them, push beyond. Today we'll start with what you only think you know. Show me what you're made of. Maverick still has it after all this time, and now he could just stand in front of the class 
and tell them all they need to know. He can give them the information that he's learned and really set them up for success, but instead he shows them. He gets in the cockpit. He goes and does it and proves to them that the way he's going to teach them will actually be for their good, even though it involves throwing out the manual and kind of going against what maybe the conventional wisdom might be to train these fighter pilots. He's got a different way because he knows what they need. Phoenix, I can't see him. How close am I? Phoenix. I'm dead, dickhead. Is he in the afterlife bag, man? <laughs> where is he? Where is he? That's a kill. This is the action of a true teacher, a master even, who's going to push them to their limits, help them see where the end of themselves is so that they can exist there and live there. And when it comes to that moment, they're going to be prepared to do exactly what they need to do, no matter the cost. But again, this isn't a perfect hero. He knows his limits and he'll even go to those around him who he values for advice. I'm not a teacher, Ice. I'm a fighter pilot. Naval aviator. It's not what I am. It's who I am. How do I teach that? Even if I could teach it, it's not what Rooster wants. It's not what the Navy wants. That's why they can be the last time. The only reason I'm here is you. If I send him on this mission, he might never come home. And if I don't send him, he'll never forgive me. Either way, I could lose him forever. Here is when we start to see the real depth and emotion of this hero. The fear that exists out of the, the loss of Goose and the fear of losing Rooster and losing those who he cares about is really what starts to bring this hero into a deeper understanding and helping bring us, the audience, into a deeper understanding of who this character really is. And it's one that we can relate to because we've all been there. We've all been afraid of losing those we're close to. And now every decision from this moment forward carries so much weight to it because of this one scene. Why'd you pull my papers at the academy? Why did you stand in my way? You weren't ready. Ready for what? Huh? Ready to fly like you? No. Ready to forget the book. Trust your instincts. Don't think. Just do. You think up there, you're dead. Believe me. My dad believed in you. I'm not gonna make the same mistake. Now we understand his inner turmoil and it's all tied back to him losing his wingman, Goose. So what does Maverick do? He does what every good mentor would. He shows them. Three, two, one. Bounce away. Bullseye, holy shit! expanding their understanding to even realize that what they were trying to train for actually could be done. All of them thought it was impossible to do and their teacher made them believe. Why? Because he hopped in that cockpit and he did it himself to show and inspire them to be able to do 
what he does. Isn't that exactly what a teacher wants their students to be? Ones that will imitate them and understand they can do far greater things than just what they think in their own minds. But even further, this teacher is willing to die for his students. Do you finish? Shit, I'm in the face! Who's doing it? I can't shake him! They're on me! They're on me! No! No! Dagger one is hit! I was. Daddy! Anyone see him? Does anyone see him? Willing to give their life. They're willing to sacrifice themselves for the good of the other. And that's at the heart and the core of everything being taught here by Maverick to his students that you need to be willing to sacrifice and give it all up. The same selfless, self-sacrifice attitude that the teacher wanted to instill is exactly what's happened. And now we come to the most important part of the entire movie, where the student shows that the training has taken, that they've matured and grown and showed improvement and are ready, really, to take on the task in front of them. What the hell? What are you doing here? What am I doing here? See, I took that missile so you could be down here with me. You should be back on the carrier by now. I saved your life. I saved your life. That's the whole point. What the hell were you even thinking? You told me not to think. Well, it's good to see you. And that's why Maverick is a great hero, because he's a great mentor, because he's a great master and teacher, because he's a great pilot who's skilled, because he goes through the emotional turmoil and we see him come out on the other side. All of that contained in this one film is exactly why this hero in this sequel really works. Maverick was the mentor that Rooster needed. The pain of the past did not stop Maverick from doing exactly the job that a great hero does. Ray trains with a grumpy, disillusioned Luke Skywalker while the resistance is on the brink of collapse. Kylo Ren is torn between the dark side and something deeper, creating a deadly connection between him and Ray. Old heroes struggle, new ones rise, and the lines between good and evil blur. With epic battles, shocking twists, and a willingness to burn down the past, The Last Jedi takes Star Wars in a new direction. A terrible one. So what makes Luke Skywalker a bad hero? Isn't he one of the most iconic and best heroes of all time? Well, when we take a look at The Last Jedi, things have changed.
From the moment we encounter Luke on screen, we find him to be old and broken and hurting. He wants to be left alone. He wants to give up on everything, all because he can't cope with the mistakes that he's made. We need the Jedi Order back. We need Luke Skywalker. You don't need Skywalker. Did you hear a word I just said? Think what? I'm going to walk out with a laser sword and face down the whole First Order? What did you think was going to happen here? You think that I came to the most unfindable place in the galaxy for no reason at all? Go away. Broken and hurting, Luke has let his failure define him. His failure with Ben Solo is the thing that's defining everything. It's winning. It's not something that he is even in tension with. He's given up on himself. He's given up on the Jedi. He's given up on Rey. And so even when he's momentarily guilted or convinced, I'm not coming back. Nothing can make me change my mind. By R2-D2 showing a hologram of Leia, he doesn't even really train her because he's really just going to try to show her why the Jedi must end. Tomorrow, at dawn, three lessons. I will teach you the ways of the Jedi and why they need to end. Oh, it's... It, uh. This is, it, it feels like a toddler, like a five-year-old who doesn't want to share his toys, who's being made to share his toys, so he's just like, fine, I'll let you have it. I'll do something. Will you just leave me alone? And it is so ridiculous. This is not, this is not what makes a good hero. And when Luke starts training, there are no lessons, there's no wisdom, there's nothing to give Rey to even say, you could do what I do, let me show you. There's nothing, no care for the galaxy, no care for Rey, no care for anyone, just selfishness. Now that they're extinct, the Jedi are romanticized, deified. If you strip away the myth and look at their deeds, <laughs> the legacy of the Jedi is failure. Hubris. That's not true. At the height of their powers, they allowed Darth Sidious to rise, create the Empire, and wipe them out. It was a Jedi Master who was responsible for the training and creation of Darth Vader. And a Jedi who saved him. Yes, the most hated man in the galaxy, but you saw there was conflict inside him. You believed that he wasn't gone, that he could be turned. And I became a legend. The truth is, heroes do difficult things. Heroes overcome difficult things. Heroes overcome the failures that they've dealt with. And we've only been able to see Luke on screen for such a short amount of time. And in the short amount of time we get him, it's nothing but misery, nothing but anger, nothing but fear. It is so far away so that even when they build to an eventual somewhat of a redemption, it doesn't reach the payoff because it's not believable. There is nothing that really makes it work. And so if you're going to go this route with a hero, if you're going to take someone who is iconically known for their patience, for their loyalty, for their trust, for their willingness to see the good in others, even though all everyone else sees is evil, you really need to make it work. We've already seen how heroes push their students to be better, to push them to the limit, to put pressure on them so that when the pressure comes, they know what to do. This is what Yoda did with Luke, yet Luke is not going to do that with Rey. So enter the only real hero of this entire movie, the only one who's actually going to impart any teaching of any kind of wisdom it's Yoda. Skywalker. Still looking to the horizon. Never give up. The need in front of your nose. I was weak. 
unwise. Lost friend, so you did. Lose friend, we must not. I can't be what she needs me to be. He did my words not, did you? Pass on what you have learned. Strength, mastery, <laughs> but weakness, folly, failure also. Yes, failure most of all. The greatest teacher, failure is. <laughs> Look, we are what they grow beyond. That is the true burden of all masters. And so now our hero, supposed Luke, goes and apologizes to Leia for him leaving and running away and that he can't save Ben. And this is supposed to be the building to his redemption where he's going to sacrifice himself to build time for the rebellion to escape, for everyone to get out just like Obi-Wan did. And I understand what they're trying to do. I understand how this is supposed to be a redemption arc. But having Luke been gone for as long as he was, disappearing the way he did, not being a part of training Rey, there is so much to overcome that this redemption arc story, whatever you want to call it, just falls flat. Vlad is this empty pile of robes sitting on a rock. This is how our hero goes out. You can't build an entire movie all to just try to flip it at the end when fans have expected and desired and seen so much from this character for so long that this just doesn't work. Luke is now left as a terrible hero. And that's why fans were so upset with The Last Jedi. Obvious conclusion, when we look at these side-by-side, -side, Maverick and Skywalker, we see that there's one that lived up to those ideals we desired to see in our heroes because we desire to see them in ourselves, and the other just leaves us frustrated and angry. And so Star Wars fans are left with a disgusting taste in our mouths when it comes to our beloved hero, Luke Skywalker. It's as disgusting as that blue milk he spent all that time chugging on Octu. There's nothing left to say. Luke is a bad hero. Hey, thanks for stopping in and watching this whole video. I greatly appreciate it. If you're new here, welcome. We're so glad to have you. If you want to check out one of my other videos where I go through good and bad plot twists, looking at the Acolyte and Fight Club and the Prestige, uh, you should click on it. I think you're going to like it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.